Anyway, listen, Baroness Claire Fox is here, Director of the Academy of Ideas. Um, and Claire, just before we come to you, let me play you this um, from Business Secretary Jonathan Reynolds. He's in the new Labour government. He was on uh, Laura Kunzberg's show uh, on Sunday morning. Uh, and here's what he had to say about people who vote for reform. A party like reform, now it has members of parliament, will come under the kind of scrutiny mm -hmm. which they maybe always should have come under. And they will find that very difficult. And we will come for them. We will tell people what their agenda would mean for their economic security, for their national security. And we'll relish that argument because we know that we're in the right place. And a party like reform is frankly not. Do you think they're not good people? You, you hinted they were not good people. I, I think the people who voted reform are good people, often didn't know the full agenda of reform. Oh dear, oh dear. Um, Baroness Claire Fox. Now, where have we heard all that before? You didn't know what Indeed. you were voting for. You didn't know because you were too stupid or because they were hoodwinking you and they were leading you astray and they were telling you things uh, just to try and get your vote. I mean, come on. I know. That, that was one of the more irritating, um, complacent, arrogant statements that has come out. Um, I think that, that he went on to say, by the way, they didn't know what they were voting for because reformer pro Kremlin. What? I, I mean, mean, are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, I, whatever you think about what Farage said about um, the issues around Ukraine, which were actually nuanced and quite complicated. Absolutely. And um, this was a kind of crass bit of misinformation. Mm. And he went on to give other examples, but the whole sense in which they weren't under scrutiny but we were, is actually missing the point because mm. actually it's Labour's policy that has not been under scrutiny from the press. And if anything was under scrutiny, it was reforms. But reform, nonetheless, have only got five MPs and the Labour Party are now in government. So the scrutiny will be that way. But to treat the voters with such contempt yeah. as to suggest that they were hoodwinked you know, good people but stupid. Yes. I mean, that is more condescending than if they were bad people. Right. But he sort of had to say that because he would got himself into a pretty bad place by kind of hinting that the Reform Party was full of bad people um, and so were the people that voted for them as well. So he kind of, that was the lesser of two evils that you saw there because he was yeah, desperately yeah. trying to recover. Because, you know, on the one hand, you've got Keir Starmer talking about all high and mighty about how, you know, we are the party for all the people. Even if you didn't vote for us, we're here for you. Uh, we're here to calm the waters and to bring, uh, you know, um, absolute, um, you know, professionalism and honesty to chaos and, and, you know, division. Well, it doesn't look like it to me. Well, that certainly wasn't a statement of it. I mean, I want to, in counter, to counter that, by the way, wish the Labour government well. Because, you know, I live in this country, you live in this country, Mike, all the listeners and watchers live here. Yeah. And we want this government to work. Because I'm not sectarian about these things. If we have a government that can improve things for ordinary people in this country, mm. good. Now, I might be, I might be un, you know, unconvinced that that's what's going to happen. But I don't start off by saying I hope they fail at no. every turn. No, I'm, I'm, not... I'm with you. No, I'm the same. I mean, I started my show this morning by saying, look, I'm, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. The Labour Party uh, in, in government has started, you know, with you know, with hitting the ground running. They've got some, seemingly quite a lot going on. You know, Starmer's had a conversation with lots of world leaders. Lammy's off in, in Europe trying to renegotiate Brexit. You know, we've got um, West Street talking to the junior doctors. All fine. They're, like, they're going to hire a new border force commander today or they're going to put a, an, an advert in the paper for it. You know, it's all fine. It's all going on. I'll give them credit for that. But, you know, let's let's wait and see uh, how it all goes. And let's put them under scrutiny. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm very excited. If you listen to the rhetoric today on economic growth, what's not to like? I mean, some of the things that they're putting forward are things which one would have anticipated we'd have had out of the Tory mm. government, but they didn't do it, right? Yeah. So I'm quite keen that there is some economic kickstart and a bit of dynamism around you know, industrialization, building houses, these things are important. Getting rid of some of those planning problems are things which, goodness knows, the yeah. Conservatives talked about but didn't do. So let's see if Labour does it, because that would be positive if they did. No, it would. I mean, like I was watching, you know, the head of Unite, the union yesterday, saying we want British jobs, we want British steel uh, to continue, we want jobs in the steel industry to remain in Britain, and all of which I suppose most people would agree with, but if it needs to be subsidised to the point where it's not actually financially viable, you know, is that what we want? Is that the country we want? Because the Labour Party never said they were going to, you know, nationalise the steel industry. They never said that uh, they 
were going to subsidise industries. They never said they were going to be protectionist. I don't, I don't think they will be. I doubt that they will be. So, you know, there's an awful lot going on without any kind of sense of direction, it seems to me. Yeah, so that's what we've got to keep our eye on. I mean, as it happens, some of those nationalised key infrastructure projects was, were actually, if you could find them anywhere, in the reform manifesto yeah. um, or, or contract with the people and also in, in the FDP manifesto, we didn't really hear it from Labour. But like I say, credit where it's due, the, the rhetoric's fine. I, I, I think slightly more worrying is they've, they've also hit the ground running and putting people in uh, alongside me in the House of Lords yeah. who were experts. Mm. And I think that's a slightly more nerve-wracking idea that they're making ministers by putting people in the Lords. I mean, governments have done that before. But this idea that they bring with them a special expertise. Now, I was quite excited about uh, Lord Timpson of the Timpson dynasty. He'd been very positive around prison reform. Yeah. He's been brought into the Lords. But then there's an interview in which he says, maybe we should let out a third of all prisoners, right? So... You know, that wasn't in the manifesto. No. What? Um, but also, and so, I mean, like, with love and affection to Mr Timpson, you know, he gives prisoners jobs. I mean, I always said, with my tongue slightly in my cheek, are you sure the best idea to give prisoners uh, who may have been in prison for burglary access to a key-making device? Because, you know, when you come in and bring your keys in, he's going to be able to make a set. Now, uh, you know, that not, doesn't necessarily mean that's bad. But, you know... So he's, he's, he's running a good business. He's, not a, he's, he's obviously a shrewd individual. But, you know, what does he know about letting people out of prison that, is, that nobody else knows? Well, no. I, 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 again, I'd like to give him some credit. But the point I'm making is, is that it depends what the policies are. There's a prison crisis. This is somebody who's at least shown an interest in prisons. But it's just this idea that you should have people who are unelected making these cabinet-style decisions. Yeah. Now, I mean, the whole House of Lords situation is that everyone's unelected, but if you think that you've got so many MPs that have been brought in, but you still need to bring in people into a cabinet that are actually unelected, that indicates a lack of confidence in your own MPs, mm. but also shows a certain disregard for the democratic process, I'd say. Well, I think so. And clearly there are others whose names have also raised eyebrows, not least Patrick Vallance. Uh, you remember him uh, as the man at the COVID inquiry uh, back in November who said lockdowns should have been broader, harder, and they should have been made earlier. Uh, he also said local restrictions weren't tough enough and they were left too late. Now, this is a guy who um, was amongst the people, I would say, who misled this country during COVID, who misled politicians during COVID, um, who quite frankly were quite disgraceful in the way that they put up graphs which were completely and utterly misleading uh, of infection rates. You know, they would compare apples and oranges. They wouldn't compare apples and apples. You know, a lot of people are very upset about the fact that Valence has been appointed uh, Minister of State for Science. Um, he was a chief scientific advisor for the government back in COVID times, but he doesn't have any mandate to do this, does he? I think that the Valence appointment is one of the most controversial and actually one of the real slaps across the face for ordinary people. Yeah. And the, the irony about this is that what you want in somebody who's a science minister is somebody that you really believe you can trust to take science seriously. Mm. And what we saw during lockdown, as you've just indicated, is that science itself was treated with contempt and disregard. Yeah because the scientific evidence was ignored in order to pursue a political agenda. There was huge yeah. amounts of scientific data that contradicted lockdowns, yeah. that contradicted vaccine mandates, that contradicted wearing masks, that had children kept off school at their mm. um, great cost and expense to children's development that no science proved. But they kept saying, look at the science, yeah. here's the scientist to back it up. And now they've rewarded him for that. So I think that we can have real qualms about that. Yeah. We've also had Jackie Smith, Oh, by my the way. God, you know. I, where'd they get her from? But, well, the, the, you know, I quite. she's a, quite a good political commentator these days. She's got a good podcast with Ian Dale, all yeah. very interesting. But the thing is that she actually left government in something of a disgrace around the expenses. Well, exactly. Uh, scandal. Um, she, she has taught in, in FE. And, uh, and so on in further education and she's now coming in as an education mm. minister but it's just like why have you brought Jackie Smith right. back it just seems very mysterious to me and I'm uh, what I'm trying to say is we have a new government that's actually playing already certainly uh, 
close to the wind in terms of democratic decision making and that makes me nervous well quite and i mean just to go back to balance for a moment you know because he's actually a minister and at least jackie smith's only an advisor as far as we know it yeah, but i mean yeah. what's the constitutional uh, position here can you just make anyone a minister i thought they had to be you know at least in some form or another um you know serving in a house and and for yeah. for a particular purpose no i mean uh, you've got to think that i'm afraid the conservatives set the precedent and the most outrageous, uh, obviously, and controversial appointment they made was David Cameron, yeah. right? Yeah, but was well, they, the and then they made him a lord, didn't they? Yeah, they, no, well, they will make that. The thing is, is that they're going to make them lords, yeah. right? That's the way that they'll do it. And uh, all I'm saying is that builds up the House of Lords. Mm. But it's not what you should be doing in terms of thinking, looking at the fresh talent that you've got. Right. Um, and so I'm just a bit anxious about that. Some, look, some of the other appointments are also controversial um, because um, we, we've got Lisa Nandy in um, as the culture and sports yeah. secretary. And that was because, obviously, they lost their MP to a green, Thangam Debonair, yeah. who was earmarked out. And some people are not quite sure what Lisa Nandy is going to be doing in that role. Um, there is a, a row of brewing in the background, just to keep your eye on, which is they haven't brought in a women's inequalities uh, minister yes. yet. And some people might say, well, do we need one of them anyway? Mm. But the thing is, they've always had one. Right. This is partly because Annalise Dodds, who had that role as shadow, was very much a, uh, um, not on the side of women's rights, very yeah. sympathetic, what is it? Um, an ally of trans people That's constantly it. arguing for trans rights and for a conversion therapy bill. She seems to have been sidelined and given mm. aid, but they haven't appointed anyone as that women's role and so there's quite a lot of people on the gender critical side looking very closely as to whether they're avoiding putting somebody into a position of women's inequalities right. um, because they know it'll be controversial because they haven't got that many people who are absolutely clear will know what a woman is in the first place to give them the role of the woman's uh, minister. So we'll see what happens in that regard. <laughs> but ironic. Also, the no veterans minister either. Um, Johnny Mercer no, exactly. lost his seat uh, famously uh, on Thursday night. But they've decided they don't need a veterans minister. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that, as I say, around the periphery of who will be, not in the Cabinet, but who are appointed to these roles, will be quite important to keep our eye open for. But the other thing is, I think because they haven't been in power for a long time, we've got to acknowledge that we don't know a lot of these people, right? right? So everybody wants to talk about Angela Rayner or Yvette Cooper, because we're kind of familiar with them. But there's going to be huge swathes of ministers and advisors and people in senior mm. positions who the country doesn't yet know. Therefore, you can say, well, we'll give you know them time. We'll see. They'll work their way through. Yeah. But what we've got to do, as as it were, the public have got to do, what the listeners, what you, Mike Graham, have got to do, and your listeners and viewers, is keep your eye out. Yeah. Because the only way that you can have scrutiny is getting to know them very well, finding out exactly what they're saying. I mean, I just would like to say that one of the utterly depressing appointments has to be Miliband oh, Energy. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it's it's both predictable and on the other hand, uh, you do think, oh, my heart sank because, you, you know, the, the guy is anti-energy. Yeah. And it's all very well them talking about growth today, which, as I say, is a very positive sign. But you've got somebody there who's basically almost a degrowth person because he's so committed to net zero in a zealous way. Mm that you can see that that's going to cause real serious problems in terms of genuine growth because you're constantly going to have eco-objections to the possibility of growing anything. Yeah, absolutely right. Listen, Claire, great to talk to you. We will be keeping uh, hold of them and keeping an eye on them because that's what we do best. And with your help, we'll continue to do that. Uh, of course, Claire Fox there, Baroness Claire Fox, uh, over in the House of Lords, she's keeping an eye on them. We're keeping an eye on them as well. How about this from Matt in Hove? Mike, how on earth can Reynolds question the reform MPs? They have had serious careers in corporate finance, investment banking, commodities trading and private equity. Jonathan Reynolds worked for the council and four years as an assistant to an MP. It is laughable.